colossal day for the raid. The rally takes a start from the sub-zero camp shiver, climbs over Penzilla Pass and enters the stunning yet barbarous Zanskar Valley. The rally goes all the way to Padum and finishes the circuit back at Rangdum. Zanskar is raw and brutal and the most beautiful place in Ladakh. It's a very, it's a total broken stage, right? There's no tarmac. It's all rough, uh, rocky, right? Very, very harsh on the car. A 6 a.m. flag off meant officials got going in the middle of the night. I had the flag off what was at 6.30. Yeah. So I had to travel again. I had to travel a good 110 kilometers in, in punishing dirt yeah. to position the entire resources, set up the uh, park for me at the end of uh, the transport and Padav. Yeah. Then get back to uh, Thang, you know. The stage got flagged off and the raiders invaded Zanskar like there was no tomorrow. The unforgiving stage had different plans. The 200 odd kilometer circuit redefined what a rough stage could be. It had ice, it had a glacier coming on uh, the terrain. So vast variation and totally, you know, uh, type of terrain which no, no common man is actually used to. And the most dreaded stage of the raid DMR. Yeah. There were dips, which you had to be careful of. And the dips were like yeah, one after the other. It was not that, you know, you couldn't match the road book and the GPS. Flat out totally hitting all dips, going in the air all the time. And the roads are bad. Yeah. They are it bad. Roads, well, we call them roads, I should, but they shouldn't be called roads. And the dreaded stage started claiming its victims. The metal fatigue and the terrain combined started breaking the cars down. And a lot of dust uh -huh. entered the dust, couldn't see this track, mm -hmm. and went into a ditch. And this is what happened. This is what the shock was about. Unfortunately, we hit a dip and uh, the power steering oil uh, leaked and uh, it was all uh, smoke inside the car. We, we were running without the, uh, the four wheel drive gear lever. Yeah. So everything was open from down below and every water splash we would hit, we were getting a wake up uh, splash on our face. This is our gear lever of the 4x4. We have now removed it and covered it up mm -hmm. so the water doesn't come up. The vehicles are uh, pretty much tired and the service teams can't do much uh, much of those major repairs so mm. we pretty much have to carry on with whatever uh, niggling problems that we have. There were like two three real bad dips so I hit a dip because I couldn't see and my gypsy flew in the ear like real bad. Middle of the stage there was this splash and I thought that it's okay it won't really come up and we were quite, quite quick in that stage. Uh, we overtook a vehicle in that stage, the last stage and as soon as we hit into that dip the Flash, freeze the windshield. And men were surely not spared. We went into a dip. And, uh, I was uh, looking at the GPS at that time. And we hit into this dip and I saw the cabin it was completely tilted. I mean we were almost we would have toppled. Driver's side tire is coming upwards and the Jeep is on my side and the it hit the two tires. Hit my my side two tires, hit the ground, and I bounced on a roll cage. When I continued f further, I just realized my navy is not talking to me. <laughs> and he, the poor guy, had actually hit his helmet into the roll cage and uh, blanked out. And within 30 seconds, or I think more, when I saw him again, then I realized that we are on a road. <laughs> Lobbed by the Zanskar Terran, raiders headed back to Camp Rangdum. The raid is almost over. And the final standings were almost decided. 
uh, Red Tuk told that we lost five cars on that day, uh, one bike and four cars. There was a whole lot of stuff happening in Zanskar that day. Uh, we lost number seven, we lost number 27, uh, rear diff broken, we had uh, Suchi go out with uh, electrical problem. And it's relentless, it goes on 100 kilometers one stage to Padum, 100 kilometers back. But I think this is required, this is the real trade stage. Wading through this attrition-laden stage, Suresh Rana led the extreme cars category and looked like he had clinched the rally. Austrian biker Heli had a comfortable lead over Ashish Mudgel and his victory was almost certain. But then they say, it's not over till it really is over. One more day to go. This is it, the very last day of Ray 2011. The rally leaves Rangdum behind to cover a distance of 300 plus kilometers to culminate at Srinagar. Last day sir, last day. Competitors have been enjoying the stages, uh, reasonable attrition, 50% of the field out in the extreme. Quick stage, 36 kilometer stage from uh, Rangdum camp down to, um, we are at a place called Parkachik. Hmm. Um, all the little elements for a short stage, you know, it's got uh, long straights, dips, it's got a gorge, yeah. um, and a nice sweet downhill in the end, you know. At the end of the last competitive stage of the Raid 2011, we awaited the Raiders to reach the flying finish and ascertain the final standings of the rally. But before that, they had to tackle a 35 odd kilometer deceptive stage. Last day at the Raid is when the nervousness comes in. You know, you don't know, okay, you've done 90 kilometers, 100 kilometer stages, but the last 30 kilometers, you don't want to goof up. Yeah, wiper not working, but we went into a splash and then the water froze. There were many care caution notes, okay. the dips. Stage was good, rough was rough, ice was mila, jiske I had time lose kiya, mere wind speed mein ice lag And the windshield just started freezing, with the vapor. The vapor just started freezing on the windshield. Couldn't do anything about it. And as expected, Heli is the first biker at the flying finish. So far, yeah! yeah. Followed by Ashish Mudgil. Then, confusion and drama hit the rally when the first car turned up. Everybody was sure that it will be Suresh Rana, but it wasn't. The first car at the end of the stage was Captain Samir Pandey. Something did not feel right. When the first car arrived, I mean, the bike was fine. When the first car arrived, I thought, you know, it's time to go and say, uh, congrats to Rana, and it turns out to be Samir Pandey there. So something is wrong. So my instant reaction was to go back on the radio and check if any car was missing in the drive sequence, which wasn't the case. So uh, by which time Rana arrived. You know. Then came in Bawa, and Suresh Rana followed him. So, uh, when Rana came in, I spoke with Ashwin, his co-driver. According to Ashwin, his penalties are 12 hours, 42 minutes, hmm. 0, 02 seconds now. Okay. And the results that are put up are already showing 12.24. Okay. When his was showing 12.03. Okay. So, he seems to feel that uh, there's been an error, which, which is possible. It's provisional. You see, the audit gets done when we get to the error. As the drivers made it to the end of the stage, the whole order looked jumbled up and the tension and pressure was showing on their faces. Last day, there was some uh, problem in the result. They had not published the official result, and what they had published had some problem, a lot of people had problems. There was some technical error in their computing system. We were leading by 16 minutes yesterday. Let's see, there's something wrong with the results. See, these are the idiosyncrasies of our sport, you know. It's not, it's one of the few sports which you don't know the results. It's, yeah. Till, till you know, a good 10 or 12 hours after the event gets over, you know. That's yeah. true, sir. Any case, uh, I'm sure the, you know, the audit would sort it all out. After being assured by Manjeev... They'll do the audit, the two results will come out. Yeah, not too well. It's all provisional and provisional doesn't mean anything, yeah? Right, yeah. The Raiders then moved on to Srinagar on the last transport of the rally this year. And the next day at the final flag-in, records were set straight with the final results of the rally. Suresh Rana and Ashwin Nayak won the rally for the second year in succession as a team. 
while HS Bawa took the second and Colonel Shakti Bajaj finished third. Karan Jung won the T2 category. You know, to Rana's credit, I mean, he paces himself well. And, you know, he's a ardent sort of uh, hilly driver, you know. So again, he, he just uh, sticks to the basics. He doesn't do anything crazy. Um, he knows his capability, he knows his machine. He's one guy who, you know, paces himself and he makes sure that he gets to the finish. In the extreme bikes category, Austrian Heli took the top position. And Ashish Mutgil and Gottfried Leno came second and third respectively. A heli had demonstrated that even though he's 52 years old, he can beat the best in India. With this, the mammoth rally called Raid the Himalaya culminated its 13th edition. Over the last six days and 2,400 kilometers, the raid humbled men and machine alike. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. Sooner or later, gotta cut you down. It's an experience that broke us down and built us up all over again. An experience to learn from. An experience to cherish for a lifetime. Backbiter, tell him that God's gonna cut him down. Tell him that God's gonna cut him down. So, till we see you again on the 14th raid the Himalaya, you be safe on those roads. Praises, let me tell you the news. My head's been wet with the midnight dew. I've been down on bended knee, talking to the man from Galilee. He spoke to me with a voice so sweet. I thought I heard the shuffle of angels sweet. He called my name and my heart stood still. When he said, John, go do my will. Go tell that long tongue liar. Go and tell that midnight rider. Tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter. Tell him that God's gonna cut him down. Tell him that God's gonna 